what do we say when we see Darth Vader making cakes? We say, let him cook. So in this video, I'll talk about how to train different art lawyers with different styles. It can be dumb as a swall and you still get it, because I did. And it's going to be very easy. The first part of this tutorial is going to be just about making art lawyers for different styles. Like we have Renoir, Impressionist. We have Abladura, the Grabure artist from medieval ages. Then we have... Hokusai, the Japanese artist from 18th, 19th century, that we get applied to modern reference or to any idea you have. It's very easy to do, but the second part of the tutorial is more technical. I'll be using ConfUI. If you don't know anything about ConfUI, I have it on my Patreon. I have a free introduction there, the link in the description. And there we can run like 400 prompts, 500 prompts, with different ideas, cycle them and see which are better. It's all automated. You can run it overnight for free locally on your computer but does take some knowledge to how to make and run it. My name is Anton Iski. I've been a 3D artist for over 15 years. So previously, I worked on our rivals, and before that, a long time ago on Penguins Madagascar. Now I'm learning AI tools and sharing it on my channel. If you want to have more control over Loris and poses you provide, and not just prompts, it's doable using the sketches or 3D models, which I also provide. The video is already published on Patreon. You could go check it out, but it will be also published a bit later on my YouTube channel as well. And the link down there. To create an image, we'll be using a big model called Flux, but the model itself is trained on billions of parameters and is quite broad. If you want to fine tune it on a very specific style, we need to create another AI model called LoRa. It stands for Low Rank Adaptation. It can be trained on a handful of images and really tune your results. You can train on photoreal images for photos of yourself, for example, if you want to create a character LoRa, or you can train it on a style. Style can be anything. It can be very photoreal, painterly, or it can be as simple and clean as South Park. I don't recommend using South Park for copyright reasons, but you can if you want and I didn't give that advice. Create Loras and images. I will show how to do it at file.ai. I don't use Lora training locally because it will take too much time and it can fail during that training process. And creating a Lora at file will only cost like $2. You will need to sign up. This is a very straightforward process. Here I'm inside the home screen of file. I did put some money there. I had like $10. I already spent a lot of that. If you'll see some of the latest models here, in this case, they recently used. If you don't see, you know, Flux, you can go and search that. And don't be confused by getting a few different Flux models. There are newer ones like Flux Pro Context or Flux Crea. The problem with these new models is that they don't have control nets that don't allow us to control the pose and other stuff of the image. So I don't use them for that. We want to use this Flux Laura Fast Training for Flux Dev or Flux Schnell versions. You can see here on my right, I already have this training history with a few things already trained. On my left, I have input field. It's very straightforward. We You go, in this case, on Wikipedia, and you download the images that you see here. We only need six to 10 images. I did try to download images that were in a similar style. For example, I didn't use this rabbit, but I used basically everything that had hatching, like Gravio style, I did download that. Let me show Albert Dura collection of images that I used. Only 10 images. We can go as low as honestly like five. Then I have Hokusai images about 15 of them I used. And Renoir. Impressionist style. 11 images. We just drag and drop these images, and there are a few options that we need to consider. The trigger word is extremely important. You're going to use this trigger word in your prompt, and you don't want this word to be too common. I've before trained one Laura with Monet, Claude Monet, and this was too much of a common word, and my Laura didn't work. What I should have done, I should have called it Monet 123. That creates a unique word, and it will be easier for Flux to pick that word out of Laura and fine tune the diffusion model. In this case, this is Renoir. 
and I will put Renner 123. This is a style, this is not a person, we're not training it to have a character lore for ourselves, for example. We don't need masks, masks are for faces and such. Again, this is not relevant for a style. The steps, what I read about the steps, they give a better quality at 2000 However, that doubles the cost. So the standard cost is like $2. If I double it, it will be $4. Other stuff we don't need to touch. Then you click start and it will take five to 10 minutes to train this. I don't want to train it because I already trained it. You can see here, this is my Renoir Laura. If I click on show files, I have this Laura file, which I want to download. Usually they will be about 85 megabytes in size. Dot save tenses extension stands for a safe AI model. It's been checked that it doesn't have a malicious code. This is a pretty common name extension. I do recommend to rename this PyTorch Laura weights to something that's sensible. I usually call it Laura underscore Renoir one, two, three. I use the trigger word in the name of Laura because it then helps me to memorize and recall what trigger word I need to use for what particular Laura. And I will know then what artists I've been using there. To put it inside Confure folder, inside folders, inside Laura's folder. Very important, otherwise the Laura loader will not find the Laura. There's an option to run inference, to generate images right here. I will go click run inference. Prompt has my trigger word. Let's go and type in Darth Maul Star Wars standing, stand, standing on a turtle. The settings I want to change I want to make this square HD. So this is going to be almost four cents. Let's click run. So this is pretty cheap. And if you don't have a powerful hardware because Flux requires to have at least like 12 gigs of RAM to run it well, then file is your go-to. And in the future videos, I will talk about more powerful servers to run this on. Okay, we got a result. Honestly, not great. Now we did the style, we did get the style. Maybe I'll just go change it to Yoda. I hope that Yoda will work out. I click run. All right, here we go. We got a bit of a, bit of a freaky looking Yoda on a turtle. And this, and by the way, the image size I picked Square HD because you want to be a bit of a higher resolution for Flux. You don't want to be Square 512, but 512 is too low for Flux to run nice images. And you, wanna, you don't want to go 4K because 4 by 4,000 will also create rather ugly images. Even 2K by 2K creates Images that are worse quality than 1K by 1K. This is just the specifics of AI models. I'll click to download this image. To find a different model for animation, I will go for a seed dance by dance from TikTok. I'll go for light image to video and I'll pick my image. And this is going to be 18 cents for the video. I don't really need to play with settings. I'll go with default ones, click run, and this will take a little bit longer. You can see the prompt, yoga. Yoda and turtle slight movement. Doing video locally is also a big subject I'll be doing videos about. It has a lot of issues to deal with, but it is possible. And there we go. We've got our Yoda on a turtle with slight movement. That's pretty damn good, I would say. And don't forget to click download. And this is a simple ConfUI network. I will go step by step over each node. First, we go with low diffusion, and I'm using Flux One Dev Safe Tensors. You can download it from Manager, Model Manager. Look for Flux Dev. It is about 12 gigabytes. So click install. It will download it into the models folder. It will take a while, and it will freeze your ConfUI while you're doing that. Then you just need to refresh your browser and pick the model from the drop-down menu. Then I have the load LoRa node, which is loading LoRa underscore NOR one, two, three. And I, if I click here, I have a drop-down a whole bunch of LoRa's that I have in the LoRa folder. Then this all goes into the XLab sampler, the sampler which is calculating our latent image. And I have this empty latent image connected to the XLab sampler. We need that it's our resolution for the final image output and it can change it. And I have this few ideas for resolutions which you can use. It gets fit in into XLab sampler. And then I have my 
prompt here. Uh, first, we have a dual clip loader. This is loading two clip models, and the clip models are helping the diffusion model generation. It is mixing the words, give kind of like a vector to image generation. We need to use these two models, and we can download them from Model Manager. I can go search T5 model. I have a bunch of them already downloaded. And then once it's downloaded, you just need to refresh this browser and connect these models to the dual clip loader in the window. Then this goes to our positive prompt. And you can see here, I put my trigger word here, Renoir123, Star Wars Dark Raider Cooking Cakes. I have this flight guidance, which is deciding how strong this prompt should be affecting the image. If the guidance is too high, it will burn the image. Three is basically good standard value. A negative prompt is empty. Flux is designed in a way that should be like a human organic language where you don't use subtractive words from your prompt. It doesn't really work that well, but that was the idea. Therefore, negative prompt doesn't really affect the positive. So I keep it blank, but we still have to pipe it through to our Xlab sampler. In this case, I have this noise seed set at control after generate at increment, meaning that every time I create a new image, this will go up by one value. It helps to keep track of how many images were created. Then I have the steps. The steps is a good quality marker. I, I usually keep it between 20 to 50. Above 50 is diminishing returns. And to be honest, I never use 50. I use 25. It gives good result at a good amount of time. I think even 20 will be giving you good results and it will shave a few seconds of the processing time. Time step to start classify free guidance. Basically, you can ignore this. Everything else here we can ignore for our purpose. And then we have our variational autoencoder decode. So we are decoding from latent space where the diffusion has been happening to pixels. And our flux model here is going to help to decode the latent space to pixels. You can also find it in the model manager and look for VAE flux and download it. 300 megabytes, refresh your browser and connect here. Then it goes to the preview node to see what we are actually getting. Then I have this image safe node. It's fairly complicated node. It just a bit more convenient than the standard one. It comes from the, the Woz node suit. I have my output path. That's not default one. And I have my file name prefix. And a lot of other stuff is basically self-explanatory. And I have a bit more explanation here. If you really want to go and read through it, I use nothing but PNG and renaming the files. Comfy doesn't come from just having those simple networks producing one image. This is something you can really do on file or any other cloud service and save time on building this and pay your three cents per image, which is really next to nothing. In this network, in this workflow, I'm using prompt lists and I have a big video about prompt lists where I go in detail about it. So go check it out all free. And I will explain what it does here uh, without going too much into detail. So the main part of this workflow is the same. We have our flux dev model, our load LoRa, our MTL, our MTL image. The only thing that we are replacing, we are replacing the positive prompt with this structure, the prompt list structure. Show what nodes we are using here. I will go into custom nodes manager in workflow. I have RG3, Xflux, I like pet, ConfUI, Inspire, Pack, WWAA custom nodes. All this has to be installed to run this network. It is available on my Patreon. If you want to auto install everything, get it there. And let's zoom in on the main nodes. This is using a ConfUI Inspire pack and it is loading a text file. I have some instructions here how this text file should be formatted. And there is a very particular positioning of this text file. If we go to custom nodes, to ConfUI Inspire pack, go then to prompts. This is the folder where we need to put all our prompts. We cannot use another directory to put our text prompts there. And I have this text document with Star Wars 20 prompts. And this is how this prompt lists are looking. I asked ChatGPT to write it. Oh, you can ask Gemini. And I actually had a little mistake here. The top, the top line shouldn't be there. 
I want to have this positive and negative. Negative we are not using. However, if I keep it blank, this list won't run. It will destroy the whole network. That's the problem there. So I have to have there something. Then I need to have dashed line to separate one prompt from another. I, I cannot make this to be a capital letter. If I do a capital letter, that will destroy the calculations. So it has to be very strict formatting for a simple text document placed in a particular ConfUI notes folder. This is our prompt file that goes into the bind image unzipping note. It, basically, this is just a technical note. It doesn't do anything. There is like an extra prompt field, which doesn't do anything as well. You don't want to type there anything. And I have this image, which is just a dummy image. You can put any image into it. It requires some kind of image. It doesn't affect generation in any kind of shape or form. I don't even output any images from here. You just have to have some kind of image plugged in. And then this goes into a concatenate note. I have my trigger word adding on top of the string B. String B is our prompt from the prompt list. It makes it easy to swap different lores and add in different styles, right? So if it's going to be a Renault 123, I will put it there. One thing though, make sure you put a space there so that's then added not into one string, but has kind of a bit of separation there. I'll put Dura, then once it runs, it picks up the prompt from the prompt list and we have a Dura style lower definition in the beginning. I honestly didn't even read this prompts. I just asked Gemini to create like 50 of them and I put it overnight and some of them were completely horrible, but some of them worked out pretty well. And you just cherry pick, everyone cherry picks end of the day from their AI models. However, I missed the chunk on the left. Thing is that if I have this prompt list running through these nodes, it's not going to cycle the prompts. It will only pick the first prompt in the prompt list, which makes them basically useless. So to, to cycle this prompt list, we have to add an extra structure. We are using a WWA nested loop counter where I have to put the amount of prompts I have in the text document. And there is no easy way to find how many prompts we actually have there. I often just use a control F in Google Docs and it will tell me how many words are getting repeated, like positive, and that will be my count. Because sometimes this ChatGPT or Gemini, they will not do 50 prompts, they will do 49 or 48. So you have to double check how many they actually did. It's important for cycling. So it's not user friendly, I know, but that's just how it is. And I have max value. I have because I have 50 prompts in that file. And then I have the increment. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. I have this display to check that this list is actually running. And I can go pick everything up here and go control B bypass to check that my list is running. If it's not running, it will give just zero. But I can also double check the preview. And you can see the space bar didn't work out. And we have our different prompts happening. If I want to restart the number count, I need to press here on reset and say true. That will put it at zero. Zero means one in this binary kind of system and programming system where 10, 10 prompts, they go from zero to nine. Then I have to unclick it, run again. It will show me zero again, and then when I run again, it will pick the second prompt in the list. This is the best way I found to do this. Everything else that kind of says prompt list, prompt cycling, didn't do anything. Let me pick everything up again, control B to unbypass, and this text string goes then into the string part of the positive prompt and gets fed into everything else. And then we can click on run instant and it will keep on running and running and running. You can leave it to run for hours, for overnight and generate hundreds of images, depending how powerful your computer is and how fast it is to process stuff. And it is a lot of fun. I myself don't have a distinct art style. My stuff is just some 3D stuff. But I played also with some French styles and created Loras for them and created some stuff in their style and showed it to them. They were pretty fascinated what it can do. I just promise that I will not show other people how 
I use their art to create AI stuff. Because people in the industry are a little bit hush-hush about using AI and they do use it everywhere. Well, thank you for watching and to see the next useful video about AI, just click that subscribe button. See you.